Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 30 Marvel moments that left us speechless. We'll include scenes from any Disney backed project after 2008, along with plenty of major spoilers. Gambit, see your bet and raise it. Number 30 Thor Goes for the Head, Avengers Endgame. After Thanos eliminated trillions of people in Infinity War, the Avengers tracked him down in hopes they could reverse what he's done. But unfortunately, they're too late. It turns out that Thanos destroyed their only hope for fixing this tragedy. Where are the stones? Gone. Reduced to atoms. You used them two days ago. He used the stones to destroy the stones. This shocking revelation led to the moment where Thor took a piece of advice that the Mad Titan once gave him. With one swing from his axe, the God of Thunder decapitated the Mad Titan without warning. Thor's brutality and cold expression left us dumbstruck. While the villain got what he deserved, his sudden death still didn't feel like a victory for our heroes. What did you do? I went for the head. Number 29, Kamala Khan is confirmed to be a mutant, Miss Marvel. So we know why you have access to the Noir and how you can wield it, but when I compared you to the rest of your family, something still seemed off. Okay. Fans of the X-Men have long awaited the moment that mutants arrived to the live action Earth 616. However, they had no idea they'd already been following one until the final episode of Miss Marvel. After Kamala embraced her legacy and became the hero of Jersey City, we learned something completely unexpected about her physiology. Bruno reveals there's something special about her genes. If his verbal suggestion wasn't enough, the moment is capped off by a familiar musical motif. Kamala, there's something different in your genes. Like, like a mutation. We don't know how or if Kamala will factor into the X-Men's future, but this moment is still a huge and surprising step towards bringing mutants closer to Avengers. Never forget, mutant and proud. Number 28, Magneto shows restraint, X-Men 97. Magneto agreed to undergo a trial at the UN to address his past crimes. Unfortunately, the proceedings were interrupted by the so-called Friends of Humanity. The violent group attacked mutants and tried to depower the master of magnetism. When one of their guns took Storm's abilities away, an enraged Magneto took a Friends of Humanity leader and the UN Council into the sky. We were convinced that he would exact a brutal punishment. But to our utter surprise, Magneto showed restraint. There was a time I would smite you all for what was done to Storm. But today, I have saved you from your own. He chose to deliver an epic monologue where he encouraged his foes to put aside their prejudices. Magneto's self-control and the epic mic drop he hit everyone with at the end of his speech both left us too stunned to speak. Please. <sighs> Do not make me let you down. Number 27, Maria Hill dies, Secret Invasion. While this particular Marvel show didn't really resonate with everyone, there's no denying that a major plot point in its premiere sent shockwaves through the fanbase. In the first episode, Nick Fury, Maria Hill, and Talos teamed up to stop the villainous Gravik from setting off a bomb. Got one carrier going northeast, the other one south. Let's move. Their task was especially difficult because the antagonist could shapeshift into anyone. By the time Fury found Gravik, it was too late to stop the bomb. We were still reeling from this tragedy when Maria Hill met up with her boss. Before they could make a new plan, Fury fatally shot her. Hill! We were expecting the reveal that Gravik had been behind this. However, we never expected the franchise mainstay Maria Hill would die like this. Number 26, Kahori's people arrive. What if? A young Mohawk woman named Kahori was living a peaceful life until conquistadors arrived. While she was running away from the invaders, they shot her and knocked her into a tesseract-powered portal. The trip gave her powers and took her into a populated place called Sky World. Since the residents there had special abilities too, Kahori tried to lead her new allies into battle against the conquistadors, but no one was willing to fight beside her. <laughs> Kahori, what's it? Undeterred, Kahori raced into battle alone. 
Just when it looked like she would be struck down, the Sky People arrived to back her up. The music, animation, and emotional weight of this scene all hit us hard. We simply watched in awe as Kahori's story ended in triumph. <laughs> Number 25, Daredevil meets Spider-Man, Spider-Man No Way Home. Audiences knew that Holland's third solo outing would include cameos from characters that had appeared in past Marvel stories, but there was one appearance that no one had prepared for. After Peter Parker ran into legal trouble, he requested the services of a really good lawyer. We were blown away when we realized that Matt Murdock had agreed to help the webhead. <clears throat> That's great. Thank you. Well, I have some good news, Peter. I don't believe any of the charges against you are going to stick. Wait, seriously? Although we didn't get to see him suit up on the big screen, he still got to make another unexpected cameo on streaming. During the very first episode of Echo, Maya Lopez went on a mission for Kingpin and encountered a fully suited daredevil. I've been watching them all night. <laughs> And you guys show up. The fight scene that followed was absolutely breathtaking. Daredevil just has a knack for making excellent cameos. Number 24, Mark reveals Steven's origin, Moon Knight. In the episode Asylum, we learned that when Mark was younger, he lost his brother after an innocent afternoon playing in a cave went horribly wrong. After the incident, Mark's mother blamed him for his brother's death. She often lashed out at him in a variety of horrible ways. During a particularly dramatic confrontation, Mark manifested the Steven personality to help him cope with the pain. Open this door! Bloody hell. While this entire plotline took audiences by surprise, its conclusion truly left us speechless. A flashback shows that Mark was unable to attend his mother's funeral due to their turbulent history. But after his grief catches up to him, we were left stunned when he switched into his Steven personality and kept going. Oh, bollocks. Not again. Hey, yeah, Mum. Hey, you all right? Yeah, um, <laughs> would you believe it? I am totally lost again. I don't know where I am. Number 23, a quick cameo, WandaVision. WandaVision is quite the meta show, paying tribute to and parodying plenty of TV shows and tropes. Do you want me to take that again? Uh, I'm sorry? You want me to hold the babies? Should we just take it from the top? One of these is stunt casting, and it worked like a charm. While Wanda and Vision are having an argument, Wanda has to answer the door and who should appear but her long-lost brother, Pietro Maximoff. Long-lost bro get to squeeze his stinking sister to death or what? She recast Pietro? Except it's Quicksilver as played by Evan Peters from the X-Men films. Everyone lost their minds with excitement over what this could mean with regards to the multiverse in the MCU. While the payoff was not as satisfying as the reveal, Ralph Boner, really? It was still a fun and surprising moment. Agnes doesn't live here. You do. Oh. You're Ralph Boner? Boner. Number 22, Rhodey's Fall, Captain America Civil War. You'd expect there to be casualties in a film with the word war in the title. But although no Avenger dies by the end, there are still some steep consequences. After two teams of heroes spend time brawling at an airport, Captain America and Bucky fly away from the battlefield. When War Machine gives chase, he asks Vision to get Falcon off his tail. But the distractor synthesoid misses and breaks Rhodey's power source. Vision, you copy. Target his thruster. Turn him into a glider. The harrowing sequence ends with War Machine hitting the ground because no one can get to him fast enough. Fortunately, Rhodey survives the fall, but we'll never forget how close the MCU veteran came to death. Sorry. Number 21, Rocket loses his friend, Guardians of the Galaxy, Volume 3. Throughout this epic and funny space film, we got sobering flashbacks of Rocket's awful origins. We quickly learned that he and his three animal friends were experimented on and caged by the morally bankrupt high evolutionary. They found comfort by giving each other hope. Someday, I'm gonna make great machines that fly. And me and my friends are gonna go flying together. 
into the forever and beautiful sky. So when Rocket discovered the high evolutionary plan to execute them, the Guardian broke them out. Just when it looked like they were all home free, the villain killed the kind Lila right in front of Rocket's eyes. It really is good to have <laughs> He cried out, but we were speechless. After Lila's shocking death, Rocket brutally damaged the villain's face. Security answered his violent actions by killing his last two friends. The traumatic flashback stands as one of the most harrowing scenes in the entire MCU. Number 20. The Multiverse is Born Loki When Loki and Sylvie reach the end of time, they discover a stranger named He Who Remains. The mysterious man reveals that he built the Time Variance Authority to control the timeline. Additionally, He Who Remains reveals that if he dies, the multiverse will be born. But splitting the timeline could also allow an infinite number of enemies to threaten the main universe. Sylvie, the universe is in the balance. Everything we know to be true. Everything. I know the TVA has hurt us both, but what if by taking him out, we risk unleashing something even worse? At first, we were positive that the two gods of mischief would never allow the multiverse to exist. But Sylvie fights until she defeats Loki and slays he who remains. Watching the timeline split before our eyes was astounding. While we knew trouble was coming, we also knew that the MCU could now access a multiverse of characters. But someone is coming, countless different versions of a very dangerous person, and they're all set on war. We need to prepare. Number 19, Quicksilver's death, Avengers Age of Ultron. As soon as it was announced that Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver would be in Ultron, audiences got pretty excited, but no one could have anticipated that the duel's time together would be so brief. During Age of Ultron's final battle, the titular villain fires at the Avengers and other survivors of his attack. When Hawkeye is caught in the robot's path while protecting a young boy, Pietro suddenly runs over to shield them from the gunfire. He didn't see that coming. The sacrificial act was as jaw-dropping as it was controversial. Although we're glad Hawkeye survived, we still can't believe Quicksilver's time as an Avenger ended so soon. What? If you stay here, you'll die. I just did. Number 18, Infinity Ultron breaks free. What if? We were stunned when we saw the evil AI launch enough nuclear missiles to kill off most of Earth's population. But his global act of destruction was just a warm up. After Ultron acquired all the Infinity Stones, he gained the ability to travel to any universe. His curiosity about the multiverse eventually put him face to face with the Watcher. The cosmic narrator knew that Ultron could cause untold destruction across every reality. So many universes, so much chaos. They need to be silenced. You do not have to do this. With the fate of the multiverse at stake, the Watcher decided to fight the AI himself. We fully expected the cosmic being to dismantle the robot, but to our shock and horror, Ultron won their duel. The sight of the victorious villain looking out at the multiverse still chills us to the bone. Run, watch, it doesn't matter. From here, I can see everything. No one can stop me now. Number 17, Liz's dad, Spider-Man Homecoming. Being a teenage superhero can be stressful. In addition to trying to stop Adrian Toomes, the vulture, Peter Parker also has to deal with high school stuff, like homecoming dance. I guess you already have a date to homecoming. Actually, I'm so busy planning and I never really got around to that part, so. Uh, you wanna go with me? Yeah. <laughs> really? When he turns up at his love interest Liz's house, he and the audience are flabbergasted when the vulture answers the door. Toomes is actually her father. He must be Peter. Yeah. I'm Liz's dad. Put her there. Hell of a grip. Come on in here. Come on. <laughs> sure, the movie's called Homecoming, so it had to tie into the plot somehow, but we didn't think the villain would be Liz's dad. It's a great twist that made the vulture not only more relatable, but arguably scarier. That scene in the car still gives us chills. And don't you ever, ever interfere with my business again. Because if you do, I'll kill you and everybody you love. I'll kill you dead. Number 16, Isaiah's Backstory, The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. 
After Sam Wilson is entrusted with Steve Rogers' iconic shield, he's shocked to learn that the Avenger wasn't the only Captain America. The hero once known as Falcon is eventually introduced to a black man and veteran named Isaiah Bradley. During the Korean War, the soldier became a super soldier and single-handedly liberated a prison camp. But he wasn't treated with a welcome home like Steve Rogers was. Instead, Isaiah was imprisoned and experimented on for 30 years by the country he fought for. You know what they did to me for being a hero? They put my ass in jail for 30 years. Carl Lumbly's moving performance makes this revelation especially heartbreaking. And while nothing can ever replace what he's lost, Isaiah has done some justice when he finally gets the recognition he deserves in a truly awe-inspiring scene. Now they'll never forget what you did for this country. Never. Number 15, Natasha's Sacrifice, Avengers Endgame. The Avengers could only restore the lives taken by the Mad Titan by collecting all six of the Infinity Stones. That's why Natasha and Clint couldn't turn back when they discovered that they could only get the Soul Stone by paying a heavy price. Although Black Widow volunteered to give her life to get the cosmic item, Hawkeye refused to accept her selfless wish. You win. The two proceeded to fight each other to see who would walk away with the Soul Stone. Just when it seemed like Clint would die, a last-minute reversal saw Black Widow make the ultimate sacrifice. Hawkeye initially couldn't utter a single word after he watched his friend die. At that moment, we all knew exactly how he felt. Clint, where's Nat? Number 14, The Mandarin Reveal, Iron Man 3. The terrorist mastermind the Mandarin proves quite the threat to both Tony Stark, Iron Man, as well as the United States. You know who I am. You don't know where I am. And you'll never see me coming. His explosive soldiers and dark charisma gave him an air of menace. But when Tony finally infiltrates the Mandarin's compound, he's dumbfounded to discover that the man he thought was the Mandarin is just a silly British actor named Trevor. My name's Trevor, Trevor Slattery. What are you? What are you, a decoy or a double, right? Well, I mean, not going to study, no, absolutely not. The real Mandarin, not really, he came later, is Aldrich Killian, a scientist Tony once ditched at a party. While this twist certainly proved controversial, there's no denying that nobody saw it coming. No more false faces. You said you wanted the Mandarin. You're looking right at him. Who would expect using the actor of Ben Kingsley's caliber as a misdirect? Number 13, Strange Supreme's world falls apart. What if? Sometime after Stephen Strange saw his girlfriend Christine die from injuries sustained during a car crash, he found a way to travel back in time. Although the doctor turned back the clock many times, he could never save the woman he loved. Strange eventually learned that he could prevent this tragic event if he absorbed power from other living beings. After claiming the lives of many creatures and his other half, he was finally able to save Christine. Unfortunately, his decision to alter history caused his reality to fall apart. No! Steven, what is going on? No! It was horrifying to watch Strange desperately try and fail to prevent everything and everyone in his world from disappearing. After committing so many evil acts, he and the audience were left with nothing but silence. What did you do? No, 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 no. Number 12, Ego both gives and is cancer. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Ego, Peter Quill's celestial tool of a dad, is exposed as a villain with a plan to spread throughout the galaxy like a cancer, making everyone a part of him. But you know, Peter, it is a tremendous responsibility. Only we can remake the universe. Only we can take the bridle of the cosmos and lead it to where it needs to go. Having basically been brainwashed by Ego, this doesn't concern Star-Lord too much, and the audience kind of figured it out by then. But then he drops a bombshell. To stop himself from getting attached to Peter's mom, Ego intentionally gave her brain cancer. It broke my heart to put that tumor in her head. What? The shock of this is so great that it snaps Peter out of Ego's control, and he just starts blasting him. 
If we weren't still trying to get over this reveal, we'd be tempted to join him. In the hell do you think you are? Number 11, Rogue Can't Fill Gambit, X-Men 97. Genosha was supposed to be a safe haven where mutants could live in peace. Unfortunately, it became ground zero for a devastating attack. I'm so sorry, Mom. Sorry for what? We watched a few of the show's most memorable characters perish left and right in a series of harrowing scenes, but all that depth couldn't prepare us for the biggest loss of them all. When Master Mode attempted to wipe out Nightcrawler and other survivors, Gambit rushed in to stop the carnage. His heroic charge seemingly ended when the villain pierced his body. Despite being impelled, Gambit delivered one last attack. No words could describe what we felt when we saw his body lying in Rogue's hands. Sugar. I, I can't feel you. <laughs> Number 10, the god of mischief takes his throne, Loki. I'm out of options, Sylvie. I've tried everything. The only way that anything survives... Is if I never kill he who remains in the first place. One of the MCU's best villains was once presented with an impossible choice. He could either let every single reality be destroyed or let he who remains rule over one strict timeline. After trying hundreds of different solutions and getting nowhere, Loki decided to create a third option. I know what I want. I know what kind of god I need to be. For you. In an awe-inspiring scene, the god of mischief fully tapped into his divine powers. Loki then reached out and grabbed every timeline he could. Once he had taken the multiverse into his hands, he decided to keep them all going by sitting with them on a throne alone for all of time. Loki's unending sacrifice shocked and amazed us. This was the moment where a great villain became the benevolent god of every Marvel reality. Number 9. Who Killed Tony's Parents? Captain America Civil War The evil genius Zemo spent most of Civil War manipulating and deceiving the Avengers but his final sinister act relied on a brutal truth. After Zemo gets Tony, Steve, and Bucky in the same room, he shows them footage of the car crash that killed Howard and Maria Stark. What was thought to be an accident was quickly revealed to be an assassination. Sergeant Barnes. Howard. And it turns out that the brainwashed Bucky was responsible. As Tony got angrier, we sat there breathless and waiting to see how Iron Man would react. Although we didn't want him to lash out at Bucky after seeing that video, we definitely understood why the orphan billionaire couldn't let things go. This isn't gonna change what happened. I don't care. He killed my mom. Number eight, T'Challa's funeral. Black Panther, Wakanda forever. Your brother is with the ancestors. Two years after Chadwick Boseman passed away, Audiences arrived at Wakanda Forever with the knowledge that the cast and crew had worked hard to honor his memory. The film immediately made it clear that his character T'Challa had passed away. After this tragic opening, we watched as Wakandans came together for his funeral. Angela Bassett and Letitia Wright's performances were full of raw emotion and grief during the ceremony. And throughout the heartbreaking scene, Wakandans celebrated their king's life with beautiful expressions of art. No one made a sound during this impactful and moving tribute to the late and great Chadwick Boseman. <laughs> Number seven, Thanos' Sacrifice, Avengers Infinity War. The deaths in Infinity War are some of the hardest hitting in the franchise. While it was tempting to discuss Vision's heartbreaking death, both of them, this one was arguably more surprising. After Gamora is forced to take Thanos to Vormir, the location of the Soul Stone, they're told by its guardian Red Skull that Thanos must sacrifice what he loves most to obtain it. In order to take the stone, you must lose that which you love. A soul for a soul. Gamora is first amused since she believes Thanos loves no one, but she is proven tragically wrong as Thanos cries for what he's about to do. Despite Gamora's attempts to deny him, Thanos throws his favorite daughter from the cliff. This death left us shook, 
both from grieving Gamora's loss and because of how committed Thanos was to his mission. Number 6. Hydra had infiltrated S.H.I.E.L.D. Captain America the Winter Soldier After Hydra's defeat in the first Avenger, the rogue Nazi division seemed to be gone for good. And boy were we wrong. In the second Captain America film, Steve Rogers and Black Widow meet a digital copy of Hydra scientist Arnim Zola's brain. The villain then reveals that his organization was secretly rebuilt inside of S.H.I.E.L.D. ranks. The new Hydra grew a beautiful parasite inside S.H.I.E.L.D. This tactic allowed Hydra to influence global events and assassinate potential threats for decades. While this reveal could have just affected the plot of one movie, the twist is so memorable because of its far-reaching consequences. This game-changing Hydra twist went on to affect other MCU tales and will likely continue to do so in the future. That's okay. Trust me. Hail Hydra. Number 5. A Bloodied Shield the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. John Walker wasn't most of our picks for a new Captain America, but as we saw more, we saw how the impossible expectations of the role wore on him. But no, wait, no, no, stop, hold on, stop. Okay, I think we're way past reasoning with her, unless you forgot the fact that she blew up a building with people still in it. While engaging in battle with the Flag Smashers, Walker's partner, Lamar, is accidentally killed by their leader, Carly Morgenthau. <laughs> Enraged at the death of his friend, Walker pursues one of the Flag Smashers, demanding to know where Carly is. With the man at his mercy, Walker brutally kills him, as dozens look on and record it. it wasn't me. We know Walker was under pressure, but to see him break like this and for him to tarnish Cap's shield, once a symbol of hope, is appalling. Number 4. Illuminati Demise, Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness the introduction of the Illuminati alone was a shock to the system. Captain Carter, the first Avenger. Blackagar Baltagun, keeper of the Terrigen Mists, the Inhuman King. Old favorites returning in new roles in this universe? Patrick Stewart back as Professor X? And they cast John Krasinski as Mr. Fantastic? But that shock was compounded soon after. Just as Doctor Strange tries to warn them, Wanda Maximoff, the Scarlet Witch, pursues him into this universe. It's encouraging you're worried about. Do you seriously think I'm a bigger threat than the Scarlet Witch? Oh, we can handle your little witch if she decides to dreamwalk. No, no, you cannot. Not unless you give me the Book of Ashanti. We appreciate your concern, Stephen, but it's not the Scarlet Witch that we fear. She confronts the Illuminati and proceeds to kill them all in creative and grisly ways. Well, all except Mordo. Frankly, a fist fight with Strange is getting off easy compared to what Wanda does to the others. I think I'm beginning to understand why your Mordo didn't like you very much. Number three, Peter who? Spider-Man No Way Home. Yes, we were all beaming at the sight of three Spider-Men just interacting with each other. Oh, my back. It's kind of stiff from all the swinging, I guess. Oh yeah, no, I got a middle back thing too. Really? Yeah. You, you want me to crack it? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that'd be great. All right. But that still didn't prepare us for the emotional gut punch that is the ending. With reality coming apart and legions of Spider-Man's enemies encroaching on New York, Peter asks Doctor Strange to make them leave the only way he knows how, a spell to make everyone forget him. Not Spider-Man, mind you, Peter Parker. You gotta understand, that would mean that everyone who knows and loves you, we, We'd have no memory of you. It would be as though you never existed. Peter promises to come find Ned and MJ after they've forgotten, and he's true to his word on that account. It's rough seeing him meet them and for them to not recognize him. It's even tougher to watch him decide not to tell them, to keep them safe. Is there anything else? Number two, Cap brings the thunder, Avengers Endgame. Endgame has so many jaw-dropping, epic moments that we could have chosen. The portal scene alone had everyone shouting incoherently. But 
our pick goes to the moment slightly before that one. Iron Man, Thor, and Captain America face off in a 3v1 against Thanos. Things look dire for the God of Thunder when the other two are seemingly out of commission and Thanos has him at his mercy. That's when Thor's hammer Mjolnir rises and strikes the Mad Titan in the back. It then returns to Cap's hand. Fans were hopeful beforehand, and of course a man as good as Steve Rogers was worthy, but knowing and seeing are two different things. Easily one of the best surprises we've gotten yet in the MCU. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Snap – Avengers Infinity War Throughout Infinity War, Thanos proves he's a capable and threatening villain. She's asked, hasn't she? Do it. Mm. Do it! Even so, most viewers who hadn't read the comics still didn't think he would actually succeed. How naive we were. After acquiring all the Infinity Stones, Thanos seemed poised to kill half of all life in the universe. But then Thor arrives and lands a decisive blow. Except his aim was off. You should have gone for the head. Thanos still manages to snap his fingers. He departs and then many of our favorite heroes dissolve into dust. It can't be overstated how astonishing this moment is. I don't feel so good. You're alright. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. I don't know what's happening. Marvel is supposed to be the upbeat franchise. They can't kill off half your characters like this, but they did. Temporarily at least. What moment stunned you the most? Tell us about it in the comments below. Uncle Bonnie. My name is Prince Tichella. Son of King T'Challa. Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from WatchMojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.